What's up, everybody? Uh, happy Saturday. It's, uh, it's Ryan. I haven't been on the page in some time. Uh, really good to be with you guys. Uh, it was quite a week for all of us. Um, I posted a lot uh, this week kind of about what was going on with Google, uh, some of the changes that are going down in addiction marketing. Uh, obviously, there's just so much happening. And, you know, I wanted to invite uh, somebody special to the page. I'm actually going to see if I can do this now as a guest, uh, Richard Jones, who book, and we're going to have kind of a back and forth about what's going on. Um, Google took this extraordinary step. Oh, there's Richard. Hey, Richard. Holy cow, it worked. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to my page, man. <laughs> no, thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah, awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna to do my dotage here for a second, and then we'll get right into it. Um, yep. you know, Google took this extraordinary step this week. Um, what they did was they banned the use of certain keywords in addiction marketing. Um, as many of you know, like people looking for help, and I can tell you from my personal experience, um, in 2006, the first time that I needed help, that I needed treatment, my mom didn't know where to go. She went to Google and she typed in, my son has a drug problem. I need to find drug rehab. Um, and all these places popped up. And this was, you know, kind of the trend up until just a few days ago. And she didn't know where to turn. She looked and she said, well, this place looks kind of nice, but it's in, you know, I was living in Florida at the time, but it's in California. And this place looks kind of nice, but it's in Pennsylvania. Um, when reality was there was probably quality care for me a couple blocks from my house. Uh, what I needed was an assessment. And what ended up happening, and this was kind of the revolving door for me for treatment for, for many years, was I went in and out of these places that really weren't qualified to handle what I was dealing with, the co-occurring disorders that I had, um, my substance use disorder. So as many of you know, treatment just boomed after um, the Obamacare mandate, and companies have spent hundreds of millions of dollars in this country. Addiction treatment, um, if, if you're not aware, it's a 35 billion, that's billion with a B, uh, dollar industry in this country. And they spent hundreds of millions of dollars, one or two in particular, which we'll get into later, have pretty much swooped up the internet. Um, and if you're looking for treatment, if you have a problem and you go to Google, you're getting pointed uh, in the Google feed to these top treatment centers. It's not because they're the best. It's because they paid for the most advertising. Um, and in any other, you know, it, it's against medical advice, first of all. And in any other condition, it's just it, it, there's no roadmap. So Google stepped in this week. They looked at uh, the algorithms. They looked at what was going on in terms of these misleading ads because it's not necessarily that we have a problem that they were advertising their business. The problem that I had, and I'll let Richard speak to this in a second, is that these companies were advertising services that, A, they weren't qualified to advertise for. They were fraudulently marketing certain things that they didn't have um, and caught kind of in uh, – you know, in between the cracks here were, were people dying. I mean, people literally dying at these places. Um, so I know Richard's an advocate. Let me introduce him because I could go on forever. Richard's an advocate. He's in South Carolina, uh, also a person in long-term recovery. Uh, you may have seen him on Facebook a lot. He, he is quite opinionated as, as I am uh, on this issue. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to welcome him and bring him onto the page. He had kind of a unique view uh, and an interesting perspective uh, that I think can add to the conversation. So, Richard, you know, A, what are your thoughts? I mean, this was a big deal. Google's only done – this is only the third time Google's ever made a move, move like this. No, it's, it's a huge deal, and it speaks to the depth and the progress that's been made around the stigma of addiction. I mean, it speaks to real progress in the recovery advocacy world, and it's a victory in that regard. And also, it's going gonna, it's gonna to save lives because in a real practical way – it's exactly what you're, you're talking about. And Favor Greenville, um, we're not affiliated with any treatment center. We make a bunch of referrals. We probably, you know, 500 private referrals per year. And I can't tell you the number of times that I have personally talked to a family member who has been scammed by one of these organizations. They got on a plane. They flew to California. They flew to Florida. Um, I've had situations, Ryan, where I truly felt like we were going to have to get on a plane and go rescue this person. 
yeah. from the treatment center, like not from a crack house or a trap house down the street, from the actual treatment center. And, and I think what Google did was it just, I think what's interesting is when we start talking about this stuff, when we start talking to these organizations, we're taking a common sense approach to this and they're listening to us. And that, that's the victory. Right. Um, now, the downside to it is, is how do we even get here in the first place? And that's because we have a healthcare issue um, being treated outside of healthcare, uh -huh. separate out, outside of healthcare. And then you have people um, motivated to fill their beds. That's exactly, you know, that's just, and then in human nature, what happens is the scumbags, you know, rise to the top. When right. it's driven by, we got to have an 85% census. So then diagnosis, what you described is so true. It's, it isn't driven by an actual assessment. Right. You call one of these clowns, they get you on the phone, and they immediately start saying things to the family like, you got to get rich on an airplane today or he's going to die. And, 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 some of them, die. and some of them will go as far as to say, I'll buy that airplane ticket for you. Um, right. Which is, you know, and, and, and you and I, we're a thousand feet deep in this issue, right? So for viewers and for people who are just learning what's going on, um, you know, it is fascinating. I do want to walk our viewers through how this went down with Google, right? Um, you know, we, Greg Williams, all the credit, I mean, the, the team at Facing Addiction, I mean, we have been uh, really knee deep in this for a couple of months now. And it was the intersection and the perfect nexus of what I like to call good journalism, good advocacy, solid advocacy, solid activism, not giving up. And what that equaled was impact and action. And how it happened is we stumbled. I mean, we knew this was an issue. We kind of stumbled upon this because we were given a grant from Google that said, hey, $10,000 in free AdWords because we are facing addiction as a nonprofit. And oh, what good. we found out was as a nonprofit, we couldn't compete with certain keywords because the treatment industry had bought them all up. So we, you know, we were kind of, you know, we flagged it. We started looking at it, running some programs. And what we found was massive. I mean, the, the massive amounts of fraud that were being perpetrated by some of these centers, some of these larger conglomerates um, shocked us. So we, 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 we did what we do when we're activists and advocates. And we are a small, you know, community in terms of like full-time activists here. And I hope that grows. I hope that what uh, our viewers and our friends in this movement and the people who are affected and afflicted can see from this action is that a small group of people can make a massive change. So we collected data, we spent time, we studied it, we contacted journalists, we talked to them, they started covering it. We took the data to, to Google. We sat with them, you know, Greg and Jim Hood sat with Google, they presented the facts. Google took their time, looked at it. We didn't give up, we stayed on their butts. Uh, eventually Google was led to either make a decision of, are we gonna forego you know, what could be a quarter of a mil quarter of a billion dollars, billion again with a B in advertising money, or are we going to make the right decision knowing that we've now been made aware of it? Well, thank goodness they made the right decision. Pulled the carpet out, I think, from a, under, under a lot of bad actors, but they made the right decision. Now, in a time, in the era of, without getting, you know, beating up on the administration too much, but in the era of, all this stuff going on and in action, uh, you know, from certain players at the pu public policy level, we as a community, as activists and as advocates can make massive seismic system changes by working with corporate America and by staying loud and making sure that we're heard. So the good guys chalk one up for the good guys this week. It doesn't yeah. happen often, but when it does, it happens big. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting that it happened at that corporate level. That's fascinating to me because a lot of times we think about activism coming through the government, right? And we're going right. to we're gonna make sweeping legislative changes and we're going to change the funding system because the government's going to going to do it. It's very interesting that this was a corporation, a major corporation. And in a kind of I almost feel like there might be more mileage we can get out of those type of situations. That's exactly what uh, was experienced. It sounds like you guys experienced with Google and good for them. Man. And I think that like, if you're a recovery advocate or you're a recovering person, you need to like champion Google and like, yes. you know, go to this, this is fantastic stuff that occurred. Yeah. I mean, we need to, 
embrace Google. I mean, and they thank you, Google. Um, and, and I've been saying it for nonstop for 48 hours. Thank you, Google. But, you know, and I'm going to go a little off topic, but like what happened here is uh, in history will show it like th this is the type of organization that our people need to support. And we need to give them credit when credit is due. And we need to keep the pressure on corporate America. I mean, look, if it can happen with what is arguably the world's large, is the world's largest tech corporation, arguably one of the world's largest corporations, what's to say that we can't take to task any other corporation, right? I agree. And hold agree. them accountable. Um, and there's a lot that all of them can do. And there is a place for them. You know, there is a place for them at the table of this movement. We need them. Now, that being said, it feels like whack-a-mole. It's Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, Google made this huge step and what pops up in its place. But unscrupulous marketers who are now looking, you know, they're, they're basically these referral services, which, again, not there are plenty of legit ones and, and qualified ones like like what you were just talking about, Favor and Greenville. Um But this guy and I don't want to call him out because I don't want Facebook hitting me up for, you know, berating him too much but he calls himself the rainmaker and he <laughs> says he says call me on the rainmaker we get right in, in quotations we get live addicts and family members uh on the phone and uh you know basically we're going to get paid per head i mean the business model is just bizarre i mean if you could think back into the 80s if this was going on with aids or hiv um people would just be disgusted it's like how yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with the referral service if it's qualified, if it's medical, if it's clinical, um, if they're not just calling a boiler room, somebody that has no, just, just no credentials whatsoever to be determining where somebody should be going to the right type of treatment other than who's putting the most cash in their pocket. It disgusts me. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, Favor Greenville has zero affiliation. We get zero money for referring anybody anywhere. To tell you the truth, we do all the work. We do the intervention. The family doesn't even pay us for the intervention. Our services are free. Right. And then the treatment center reaps the reward. You know, so that's just our model. We're fortunate because we're funded by philanthropy and we're able to do that. Um, so we got zero affiliation with any treatment center. And that's whenever you can get really good results because we got no dog in the fight in any of these places. Right. So we're not getting paid per head or anything like that. It gets really, really squirrely as soon as you start getting any kind of fee for putting people in, into beds, beds and heads, that kind of thing. Yep. And the system is set up to reward that. We're, you know, that's the, the other, not to get too deep with this, but the real problem here is that the system, and what I mean by that is the insurance payers, our traditional models, our mentality around this issue is set up for this type of corruption because it really comes down to how do you make money if you want to be in this business? Right. Money in and of itself is not evil, but how do you make money well, you got to get people into your into your program, right? You got to get right. people in. You got to get you got to have this eighty five percent census and right. and running through PHP and running through IOP and that's where and you're you like urine that testing, part of urine scans. I mean, the urine scan. It's like we've now picked up this whole new uh, racket, which is urine scan. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 and and at the, you know and again, it is a massive system failure, um, and it and it is a failure on all parts it's a failure in my opinion on natap it's a failure on I, government it's a failure on you know local they, nobody has cared until now i want to tell you something to about look at it. I can't help I, I can't help but say this uh, natap drives me up a wall stop planning stop planning golf tournaments right stop planning like conferences when you're charging my fi these families that we work with you know these treatment centers are charging 30 grand yeah. and they're sending kid there four or five times they're spending a quarter of a million dollars while you guys are getting together at a posh resort in texas and playing golf and talking to each other about how wonderful you are right shit your head guys this is desperate we are in desperate times if this isn't if this isn't a time for a shakeup, i don't know what will it take is it a hundred thousand people dead a year yeah. that'll make people say you know desperate times i i can't i don't understand how it could be business as usual for anyone right now yeah, and, and I'm I, sorry, NATAP stuff drives me nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, you know, NATAP is, you know, diving into some ethics stuff now, which is long past due. I give them credit for that. But, you know, I, a lot of people drop the ball. A lot of people like, like, drop the ball on this thing. 
so I have a, I have a parent group that we do, and 60, uh, 60 parents each week show up. And, you know, the, the optics on uh, these high-end luxury rehabs and the expense associated with them and how that feels for your average parent, your average, you know, any socioeconomic class, but even like a middle-class parent who, you know, is trying to make this work and knows that their 18 or 19-year-old is going to have to do this four or five times probably. How, how does – how does how do these two things reconcile? That's something I struggle with. And admittedly, I haven't gotten really good at like how do I share that message? I get too fired up about it, but I really struggle with the with that equation. So here's the question. Um, I mean, I know, but for anybody who's watching and it's mid afternoon, so this will pick up later on. I was going to do it later tonight, but I've got some stuff going on. Uh, so we popped on and just kind of pop up now. Um, how do you I know how to spot a patient broker from 20 miles away? You know, yeah. um, but you deal with families all day long. How yeah. would you tell the mom or the dad or the brother or the sister, what are the warning signs to them that something just might not be right here? Yeah, it's usually, a, we always say it's usually a 1-800 number, but that, that's probably not the most um, uh, accurate way to say it. We really talk about the way the person talks to them. Mm -hmm. So we try to uh, coach them through recognizing the pitch, if you will. Right. And as soon as, as soon as the pitch turns toward, hey, when can we get you in? You got to get them in, and it does. And it doesn't involve things like an, a thorough assessment or an evaluation. When it feels like you're getting bullied, that's the word we use. You feel like you're getting bullied into the into the decision making because you're scared as a parent. You're terrified, and you got this guy on the other line who's saying you got to get you got to get him in now. Those are the warning signs that we try to educate parents on. And then we tell, we tell parents uh, to stay away from um, – I'll just give you an example. There's a lot of Facebook groups where people are doing this type of stuff, and we tell yeah. them to stay away from there. Don't call those phone numbers. I don't know each and every one of them, obviously, but that's also a breeding ground for bad stuff. A lot of those folks are being paid for by treatment centers right. to be on Facebook, and they may be – I mean, who knows whether that treatment center is legit or not. But, I mean, if I'm getting paid by a treatment center to be on Facebook, I, I clearly have an objective. I mean, yeah. that's my job. I'm a yeah. marketer. I'm not a recovery advocate. They call themselves recovery advocates. They are marketers. They're not recovery advocates. Right. And I so want to be would, clear. I do want to be clear. I'm going to stop you for one second. Treatment saved my life. Treatment saved yeah. my life. Effective, good treatment saved my life in 2015 when I finally got into a place I was not preyed upon. I was not brokered. I was not trafficked. I was not marketed. My parents, my mom, um, you know, there, there was a certain scholarship available for me. Um, and I stayed sober. Thank God. And I'm alive today. So treatment works. Treatment is effective. We need to scale treatment the right way. But again, you know, I get hit a lot of the time because people are like, well, you're harping on treatment and now people don't want to go to treatment. I said, no, 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 no. That's not, that, that is not how this is going down. Um, there are, the, your, the, the treatment industry right now is a cesspool of bad actors who have made it that way. And it is up to us to do what we can to make sure we get rid of them so that the good actors, the people who, like the people who saved my life and, and countless other lives around this country can operate and do their job and do it well without all this BS. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And I, and, and I, I, I absolutely, I worked in treatment for you know, 13 years, and uh, I was a good person working there. There are, there are probably more good people than there are bad people. But absolutely. It's hard. You know, it, it, it's hard because we got to have this conversation. Yeah. And I don't think it's fair to say, like, you know, there are good people out there. Don't talk about it. We got to talk about it. And I also think that we got to have some of the hard conversations around some of the stuff uh, with the oversight organizations, whether right. that's NATAP or CARP or JCO or whatever. And all it is, and, and again, this is something I know. I, I'll speak for myself. I got to learn how to do it. I got to learn how to take the edge off, man. I got to learn. I've never been a political activist before. I've never been an advocate in any kind of way. I've always been a, a provider. Um so I, you got to learn how to give that message, but it doesn't mean we don't talk about it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be, it's the elephant in the room and it has to be brought up. No, I agree. Um, you know, where, so here we are today, Google makes a seismic, seismic move. You know, I can kind of see 
you know, the road ahead is we're going to keep, we're not stopping. We're going to keep going. You know, I think someone on the page mentioned, well, what about Facebook? Well, you know, of course, Facebook's going to be looking at this now. I mean, Google, you know, uh, tips a domino like that. Everybody's going to start looking at this. Um, you know, we do need a new, I do agree with you that, you know, the accreditations need to be updated. We do need new standards um, of care um, because times have changed. Um, you know, we do need to bring recovery. You know, one thing I'm big on is bringing recovery supports uh, to the table, but, you know, to close it up so we, we don't take up everybody's time today, but what, what do you see as the agenda? What's, you know, your, the agenda in Greenville, what, what's the agenda moving forward for the rest of 2017, moving into 2018? So we would, we would really, and, and just to be transparent, this is what our organization does. We would really push for peer recovery support service to be, a, you know, a funded part of the continuum. We feel like yeah. longer term chronic care services can, can help. We also believe that, um, I don't want to say it's like something like value-based health care or changing the way it's uh, services are reimbursed at the treatment level. Outcome-based reimbursement. <laughs> yeah, outcome reimbursement. If people had to pay back money, um, you know, to Medicaid or to Blue Cross Blue Shield, if you know, we know that seventy percent of folks are coming in and out and stuff like that. I just think what you would see then is people would start to be incentivized to different type of thinking. It would become less about heads in beds and maybe more about outcomes and stuff. And we have really smart people in this industry. There are really smart treatment providers and recovery advocates and you could get together and you could come up with new solutions, but I feel like the payer system has to trigger that, uh -huh. you know, it, 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 until there's a new way of, of reimbursing you know, value-based healthcare, for example, then I don't know that people change. I mean, it's just sort of human nature. You kind of ride out the business model just until you have to change. And, and I yeah. hate to say that, but that's sort of reality. You got to pay no, the bills, true. right? No, it's true. So how do, uh, Richard, how do people find you? So we're at uh, favorgreenville.org. I have a blog called recoverycartel.com. Check that out. And, um, you know, and then I'm still on Facebook running around doing my, doing my wacky activist stuff on Facebook. <laughs> right on, man. So we'll do, we'll do this again. This was fun. Thank you to everybody. Um, again, Facing Addiction, Greg Williams, Jim Hood, rock on. You guys kicked ass this week. Um, you know, check yeah, out great Facing job. Addiction. At facingaddiction.org, sign up, join the movement. Uh, keep sending in your stories. Happy Recovery Month, everybody. Um, you know, show that recovery pride in, in whatever way you can. Um, I'll be back soon. Thanks, Richard. You have a great uh, afternoon, I'm, brother. Thank you. Thanks.